So now we're going to look at doing the data analysis for the tunneling spectroscopy data. And uh, to do that analysis, we're going to use a software package called Igor Pro. And if you haven't used Igor before, uh, Igor is a data analysis and visualization uh, package, uh, probably similar to Origin if you've used Origin before. And it has its own programming language uh, inbuilt, and we have written a, a bunch of sort of macro um, programs within Igor um, to do the analysis that we need to do on the tunneling spectroscopy. And that really was necessary because there aren't any, um, you know, available uh, software packages that do the kinds of analysis that we uh, want to do. So the first thing to do is to make sure that we have um, the packages, um, not sorry, not the packages, ha have the macros that we um, have written. And um, so these are called um, SRS uh, Igor, um, SRS being my initials, and you can get them uh, from GitHub. Um, so you can see here I've just searched Google Git and SRS Igor, and if you click on that then you'll get, uh, then you'll uh, go to the, to the uh, to the GitHub page um, for for these uh, macros, and you can download them um, by clicking here. Uh, here we can just go download zip, and that will download all of those um, macro uh, programs uh, as a zip file. Um, it's also available on well. It's also you can always also get there via this page. I don't. I can't really know how you even find this page, to be honest. But this is uh, this is one of UCL's um, pages where people that have written software to do various analysis at UCL can make them available. Um, so I've sort of I've have linked to this from my web page, but other than that, I'm not entirely sure how you find this. Um, but anyway, if you do if you do happen to to manage to get here, then there's just a short description, and you can click here. For, this is again um, the GitHub link. So then, once you have uh, downloaded the the zip file, uh, you can un unzip uh, the zip file, and you see we have these uh, various files um, and and directories here. And to install those, so of course you need you need first to have um, you need to have Igor installed. But when you have Igor installed, if you go into your Documents folder. Then in your documents folder, you'll see a folder called Wave Metrics. That's the company that makes the makes Igor, and you can see I've had various versions of Igor. The current version is version eight, and so if you click on version eight, you can see we've got here the Igor procedures, user procedures, and so forth. Um, and there, the that's the same thing that we're in the, in the zip file. So you just need to copy all of these files across into um, your Igor Pro eight uh, user files directory under your uh, documents drive. And that's all you need to do to install the um, to, to install the macros. Again, that assumes you've already got Igor um, Pro version eight installed. So the next thing we can do is load up Igor. Um, let's just wait for that to load. Okay, so that's Igor loaded. Uh, uh, and you know, within this, you could do whatever analysis and graphing that you wanted to do. If you want to uh, do the analysis of um, STM data and STS data using those macros, then you click up here on the macros tab, and you can see there are two options here: SRS STM, that's the um, package for do, for looking at images and spectroscopy, and SRS specs, that was for doing sort of XPS type stuff. So we don't really use that one so much anymore. But anyway, so let's load up. SRS STM, and you can see now we get another couple of menu uh, options um, up up here, um, and these have the, the various uh, tools that we're going to use to do the analysis of the tunneling spectroscopy. Okay, so the next thing is we need to connect to our data. We've transferred the data onto the UCL uh, research data. Uh, file server and so right now I'm not at UCL so I'm going to need to connect to the UCL uh, VPN so uh, let me do that
Um, so if you don't have this uh, Cisco VPN client installed again, if you search UCL and VPN, uh, you'll find instructions on how to install that. And that's a very useful thing because it effectively then puts you uh, inside uh, UCL's firewall. So now that we've done that, then I need to connect to the uh, to the data storage server. So um, I'm using a Mac. Um, I'm not quite sure how you do it on Windows, but for a Mac, we just click somewhere on the on the desktop, so we don't have any other programs in view. Then you have this Go um, uh, drop down um, option here. You can click Connect to Server. The server we're connecting to is live.researchdata.ucl.ac.uk. So let's click connect. Okay, so that's connected and you can see we have now these same uh, various options that we had um, before. So let's Take the first one of those and click click OK, and uh, now you can see we have uh, access here to the data. Um, and we want year 2021, February, and I think it was the 17th of February that we we're interested in. Um, and in particular, we want to look at these flat files. So I. It's not a good idea to do your analysis directly on the um, on the server here. So what I'm going to do is copy um, this flat directory over. I'm just going to copy it onto my desktop. Ordinarily, I would I would store it in a different place other than the desktop. I think it's better to store these things in in sort of sensible um, sensible locations. Um, but for this example, I think it's fine if we store it on the desktop. So I'll copy that over and I can, well, I just, I'm just going to leave this until that copy is done. Okay, so we have our data now copied to my local computer. Uh, the data is here in this uh, flat file directory. And if I open it up again, we can see that we have here a mixture of the spectroscopy data and the topography data. Um, now there are many different software that you can use to analyze the topography data, so GWDN or WXMD. Um, we have a license for um, SPIP uh, in the lab as well, um, only on the lab PCs. Um, uh, but we can also uh, look at these images in, uh, in Igor, and so to, to do that, um, let's say we want to look at this image here, image one um, underscore two. So this is just a matter of, of taking that flat file. Um, you have to make sure you, you have to remember to load the, the macros first or it won't work. But once you've loaded the macros, uh, then you can just drop that file onto Igor and you see that it will open up um, the, the windows. And we have here the forward up image, the backward up image, the forward down image, and the backward down image. And the, the, the macros also um, tries to grab the bias and current values and put those on the images. One thing to be aware of, um, that I'm not sure if I mentioned this earlier or not, but the way that Omicron stores the data is it takes the, 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 the image starting from the bottom, works its way up to the top, um, and then it takes uh, the, 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 from the top back down to the bottom, and at the end it records, it saves all four images at once, and whatever the bias and current values were at the time when it reached the bottom of the, of the down frame, that is the number that gets recorded here. So you can see these are, these are all um, minus 2 volts and 50 picoamps. You, you, can, you can have, if you had minus 2 volts on the forward image, and plus two volts on the backward image, then you would see a plus two volts here instead of a minus two volts, so that will work. But if you took the whole up frame at minus two volts, and then sometime during the down scan you changed the bias to, you know, plus two volts, um, then all of these images would be saved with plus two volts on there. So that's just something to be aware of as you're taking the data. Um, if you can, just don't change the bias 
um, while you're taking the the, the image. Um, you should always make a note. You know, when you're taking images that you really care about, you should be writing those. The so I always write down the image number. So this is image one underscore two, uh, and the pra the parameters that I'm imaging at anyway, just so I have that written backup of of the data um, that I'm taking. Um, but anyway, and then there are ver there are various uh, you know there are various way various tools that you can use to analyze the, the these data. Um, uh, and uh, but I'm not going to go into those because it's not really necessary because you know by and large you, you might prefer to use um, some more fully functional software for doing the image analysis anyway. But I do want to show one other thing about the the topography images, and that is a sort of this this um, way that we have for um, sort of processing all of the data that's in your data folder. So if you go back to the STM menu for my macro package, uh, then this, uh, this item here, global program control, allows you to set some options. So these are sort of all toggle, uh, toggle switches here. So if I click on here, it'll have a little check saying that this is checked. So at the moment, you see this says auto background subtraction plane. Uh, so if I were to make this auto background subtraction none, and let me just delete the image that we had there before. If I now load that image in again, this time you see it hasn't done the plane subtraction. So it's got, you can see there's this overall macro slope um, on, on the data. Um, and uh, conversely, we could also have set that to um, global program, oops. Global program control auto background subtraction. If we make that line wise, then then it will do a line wise subtraction on your data. And the thing about line wise subtraction is that it now introduces artifacts into the image. You can see that this little corner of the terrace looks like it's higher than 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 the rest of the terrace, and that's just because what the program is doing with line-wise subtraction is it's removing the background from each horizontal line as it goes. So the height information in the z-direction is now no longer uh, really valid uh, anymore. So it introduces artifacts into your um, data. But on the other hand, if you have data that has a lot of curvature to it, you know, um, then sometimes it's nice just to run the line-wise You have a better chance of actually seeing the information in the image um, if you run the line-wise subtraction. So, um, but, but again, when you're doing the detailed analysis, you're much better using a plain, plain subtraction. But what I want to show you now, the reason for us explaining that, is that there is an option um, here to... So I, I've been loading the images by just taking the file and dumping it onto the Igor ego, ego, um, icon. Um, by the way, if you're using a Windows machine, then instead of dumping it onto the icon, you just dump it directly onto the Igor window. Um, that's the difference between the Mac and a PC. Um, but I have also here this option to load the data. So you can, you can click this and load the data manually. Um, and one, there's one other option here, which is process all images in folder to JPEG. So if I, if I select that option, and then I go, I'm going to select this folder. Um, okay. Um, Okay, uh, so this flat directory here, this is the this is where we uh, loaded the data into. Uh, sorry, this is this is the this is the data that we're interested in. This flat, this is on my desktop. This is the flat data folder. So if I if I open that within this um, process all the data, then what the uh, what the ego macro does is it, it goes through uh, each of these uh, data. It loads in each of these data files in turn, uh, and it just sort of the images it creates uh, a JPEG um, image, um, and it's and it stores them. It creates then these two um, folders here, JPEG and JPEG IV. Um, if you open up uh, then JPEG, uh, you can see here that uh, it has now created JPEG versions of the or of all of these flat files, and this. This uh, can be useful just if you want to sort of quickly skim through, um, quickly skim through the data. 
And this is why I usually set it to line wise subtraction when I do that, just so it sort of maximizes the chance that you see, you know, you, you can see the features in the individual um, image. And then I would change it back to plain subtraction when I wanted to do the actual analysis. The JPEG IV, in principle, this, well, it looks like it doesn't contain anything. I think, in, in principle, that should contain some outputs from the processing the IVs, but it, that never really worked that, that, that well and wasn't that useful for reasons that you'll see uh, when we start to look at the uh, IV data. So anyway, that's just a sort of a very brief sort of recap or introduction to using um, you know, looking at the images uh, in 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 e Eagle, um, and I, I think really um, this this sort of batch processing can be can be useful.